I'm Lisa Bradshaw. Thanks for watching the show. I'm starting off a little differently today than I usually do. I usually go right into the guest, which I will do in the next segment. But I just wanted to do a little housekeeping and also share a bit of gratitude with you. I finished putting up the uh, Don't Wait Project exhibit. The Don't Wait Project is a nonprofit that I founded in 2011. It's uh, a passion for my heart. It's about telling Don't Wait stories, getting the stories out there, people doing great works and living Don't Wait lives despite the obstacles they may have faced. And I founded it after the loss of my husband in 2004. I found it in 2011. It took me about seven years to get my life back on track in terms of a, uh, the message or how I wanted to go about living my life after he passed. And what the Don't Wait Project has become is a vehicle for storytelling. We do an anti-bullying program in schools throughout the country, including schools here in our community. We've been doing that for seven years. I've done exhibits at Pibus and the hospital here in the clinic. Um, at the museum as well. It's just become this uh, other way of sharing the stories that people share with us, the Don't Wait Project. The exhibit is up at Pibus. It'll be there through uh, the week of March 6th. And I leave on tour for the second tour beginning on March 25th. So the tour is something that I came up with a couple of years ago that Town Toyota here in our community sponsored. I went on the seven state tour. I interviewed people throughout those seven states about their don't wait stories, all kinds of stories, stories about veterans, stories about health, career, all types of different stories. And some of those stories were planned before I left and some I picked up a along the way. Um, someone camping next to me at a campsite or a woman who saw the wrapped car and camper on the street and stopped to talk with me and ended up having a really incredible story herself, so we started filming the interview. This trip is a 13-state tour that takes me to 13 southern states, beginning in Dallas, Texas, and I'll circle uh, down through those southern states and back over the top of them with the other states, like you know Tennessee and, and um, in places like that, and then end again in Austin, Texas. Toyota, Town Toyota here is sponsoring the trip, and then Toyota National is matching their budget, so that enabled us to hire a director of photography this time. He will travel with me and we'll make it more of a documentary style before I had to be in front of and behind the camera, and it was pretty hard to tell a full story that way. So uh, in getting ready to do that, uh, I was invited to do a TED Talk, which was held in our community, TEDx Wenatchee Talk, and it really was such an amazing opportunity to stretch myself and think more about uh, the message I'm trying to con convey through the Don't Wait Project, through speeches I give, and other, you know, through writing and the books I've written and the books I want to write. And uh, so I f feel like it really reminded me because a TED Talk is pretty intense, and we have 18 minutes to share a story and an idea, and eight min 18 minutes and that's it, or, you know, or 18 minutes or less as well. And I went almost the whole 18 minutes, and they say for every minute you're up there, you have to practice an hour, and I probably practiced two for every minute. So I really committed myself to it, and I felt good about the outcome. And it got me thinking about, again, reminded even me, who is a storyteller for a living, about the importance of sharing our story. And even if we aren't on a stage sharing it, just by living it, we are sharing our story. We are an example to other people, or we are not. And I just wanted to thank Town Toyota for believing in this project, the tour, giving me the opportunity to travel the country and interview people um, for six full weeks. I get a bigger camper and a bigger car, and I get to take someone with me who has their own car and camper that's been provided by uh, Toyota and New Camp RV. I want to thank Pibus Market for allowing the exhibit to be up all this time for the last three weeks. It gives people an opportunity to see the highlights from the last tour and get an idea of what we're doing and also thank this station, NCW Life Channel, for having my show on and giving me a voice here in this community to share the stories of others. And I get to do this every week and sit down with people at this table and, and, and I'll be out in the community as well, not just in the studio. And I, I can meet someone at a happy hour with friends and then find out this person has an amazing story and invite them on my show. And I just think that's a really cool thing to get to do, and it's a really fantastic way to help earn a living. And I just feel a lot of gratitude as I'm getting ready to leave on this next trip and also um, after having finished the TED Talk. So I'll share more information with you about the TED Talk. The process is it has to go to the TED people for 
uh, within 45 days, the edits and things from every person's talk, and there were 21 speakers that day, and then and then it'll be part of that TED cycle, and we can share that information on the website here and on the don'twaitproject.org website. So anyway, so circling back to the guests that I have on the show, and thanks for letting me just kind of give you an overview. People ask me a lot about the tour, and they're not quite sure when I'm leaving and what states I'm going to. If you visit the website, don'twaitproject.org, it's all there, and we have a map that tells you everywhere we're going, and um, there's stories, certainly a big story in each state, but also stories we pick up along the way, as we did before. So um, back in the studio today, I invited Robin Perkle. She is uh, a woman who lost her son to suicide uh, a few years back. And when she was on the show, the show is 24 minutes, and there just wasn't enough time to really share where her family is after the suicide and what they've learned from it and what they've tried to give to other people. And having her on, we had this planned a couple of months ago, so having her on at this time after just being reminded of the importance of storytelling and, you know, when you lose someone you love, it is really hard to find a balance, you know, to kind of settle the score, so to speak, and that you lose someone and you want to gain, you know, some kind of perspective or learn a lesson or give something back because of it. It's very hard to do because no matter what good you try to do in the world, that person is still gone. Mm -hmm. And so to have Robin here today and further expand upon her story and the lessons she's learned and her entire family and how the community came together, it's really what um, I want this week to be about because it's feeling like that uh, in my work and in my friendships and in my family, uh, just a whole bunch of gratitude for how far we've all come. So. Uh, stick with me. Thanks for letting me chat you up here at the beginning. It's not something I usually do, but I just wanted to thank everyone who watches this show, everyone who supports the tour, uh, especially Town Toyota for their support in sponsoring the entire trip. The cars are already shipped to Texas. The campers are on their way. The car is wrapped. Everyone on the road will know what we're doing, so I'm just really grateful. When we come back, we'll talk with Robin Perkle, and we'll talk about her son, Sean. Thanks for watching. Elements is a nationwide top 200 salon celebrating 20 years of service in the Wenatchee Valley. We are staffed with educated and experienced designers providing beauty and health services. Visit our Facebook page for our store hours and our menu of services. Family roles change with time. You may find yourself being an unpaid caregiver to a loved one. Caregiving can be rewarding, but also stressful. Taking care of yourself is vital. Aging and Adult Care of Central Washington has low or no cost services for unpaid caregivers, such as in-home support, care supplies, and counseling. Connect in your local area by calling Aging and Adult Care at 800-572-4459 and mention you're interested in caregiver support. Hi, we're back. Thanks for uh, sticking with me here. I have my guest, Robin Perkle. She uh, came from Quincy today, and I'm just really grateful to have the opportunity to talk with her. She lost her son to suicide and came on the show a few months ago talking about just the experience and what happened. But what we didn't get a chance to talk about in the 24 minutes she was here is what she's learned from it, what she and her family have gleaned from the experience and the lessons they hope that other people can learn from them without actually having to endure such a thing. So thanks for being mm -hmm. here. Thank you for having me again. And let's clarify, you are an open book, you've said before, yep. so there's nothing I can't ask you. You you can ask me anything you'd like and I will tell you. And yes. I wanna say that because viewers, yep. I don't want them to think I'm pushing you too hard or no. being too intrusive. No, not at all. You're here mm -hmm. for a reason. Mm -hmm. So we talked, um, I talked briefly, let the uh, viewers know that your son committed suicide in high school. Yes. Um, and it wasn't, he. you didn't see it coming. Nope. There were no signs. And as I look back on it, I still really can't see anything. There's really no answers except for the note that he left us that said he had been struggling with depression. We did not know that. We had a great relationship with him. We had a very open, loving, 
relationship, great communication with him, and he never shared it with anybody or any of his friends. So it came as a shock to all of us. And you said uh, when you were on the show before, just as a reminder, that you know it was typical teenage stuff. Did mm -hmm. he hang out in his room a lot? Did he dabble? You said he caught him smoking marijuana, which yep. was a shock to you as well. Mm -hmm. But as far as just being someone that was completely disconnected, that you're worried about him and we need to get him some help, that was not the case. Not the case at all. Still very involved with his sports and, and school activities. Um, grades, have dipped, they had dipped a little bit, but again, teenage angst. You just kind of chalk it up to um, Priorities. Being, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, being a teenager, and then you just kind of scoot him a little bit and say, hey, bud, you need to step it up a little bit. But it was never anything alarming. And he has a sibling. Yes, um, an older brother. brother. Mm -hmm. And his brother didn't see any no, of this coming no. either. No, and they were very close as well. Mm -hmm. And Sean had planned on going off to college and coming back and farming on the family farm with his brother. So they worked really closely together. And, you know, they had their issues too. They were brothers, but no. So keeping that in mind as we move forward, mm -hmm. uh, you had the strength of your community. I uh, have recently recently had someone on the show who told me off air that he, you know, he was one of his coaches mm -hmm. and what a great family you all are still and were then. And you know, what can you say about community support? Because the community, you said when you found out, mm -hmm. um, you ended up having to go find him because he didn't show up for school. Right. And his brother found him. Right. And that. I can't imagine what that was like for you to know that was happening and also for your son to live with that. So what do you do with that? Just that part right there. How do you guys pick yourselves up? And I know the whole community starts showing up at your house and you're from Quincy and you've lived there a long time. Mm -hmm. But what do you do with that? That 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 moment of just when you find the out, reality of it. The reality it. of it. <laughs> well, um, I think we're still reeling from it, and, and I have to say that uh, when you lose a child, you never really get over it, and then you lose them by suicide, and that's a whole other layer to it. So you learn to cope. That's how you deal with it. You, um, When we found out, um, it was a shock, but again, we go back to the fact that we have this fabulous community, and I think I told you before about this, what I call a trifecta of hope, and it's just a word I made up, and it, it consists of family and friends and faith. And without those three things, we wouldn't be able to be here where we are today. So we leaned very heavily into them, but we also opened our doors and our line of communication and, and welcomed them and, and told them not to be afraid to come to our home or to talk to us about it and to continue to talk to us about it because people don't know what to say. And so we wanted to let them know it's okay. It's okay to talk about it. I've had people ask me over the years um, when someone's newly diagnosed with something or when someone recently lost a loved one, you know, what do I do? How do I handle it? I remember one friend said, you know, his friend had died in a plane crash and he said, should I, it's the anniversary, should I get his wife a card? Is that going to upset her? And I said, she's very aware of the anniversary mm -hmm. and it's, it's um, when people are, yeah, anything you do from love, I believe, mm -hmm. is it, you can't it's make genuine, a mistake, right. you know, and so there's those types of things in the immediacy of it, but also it's not just casseroles and people dropping off food. It's just for some people, I'm not good with casseroles, but I'm, I'll get on the phone and make the calls that you yep. need to make to take care of some things you don't want to have to think about, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So you just, you kind of learn who you are in that, mm -hmm. even when you're supporting someone. Mm -hmm. And don't you think that people become more of themselves like amplified times 10 whether they are they wonderful do. or not yes you start to see who who you want in your life yeah and the friends that came forward and the ones that uh, have have they've always been our friends but even people that weren't our best of friends they were just more of acquaintances became even better friends after we lost him because they did step up and took care of things and then have continued to support us through that and and, and we even talk about the men who they're sort of one and done. We're going to give you a hug, but we're not going to talk about it again. Mm -hmm. But that hug was so emotional, and the tears that these men cried were so emotional that it made up for the rest of their life. Mm. They don't talk about it anymore, but by golly, they made up <laughs> for it then. Yeah. Well, it's hard sometimes, you know, to, mm -hmm. to move forward and know how to navigate that. Um, I want to go to break, and when we come back, let's talk about what you've done since then. Sure. You want to talk about Sean Shine and what that means and how mm -hmm. that came about mm -hmm. and just giving people a glimpse who are watching about the process of grief, but also 
what you can do as someone who someone who is on the outside of that grief and how you can support people in your life when you don't know what else to do. You bet. We'll talk about that in okay. just a minute. Sounds great. Do you want to become part of the most dependable brand of vehicles today? And start looking at Town Toyota. The innovative features of the Highlander are designed to help safely get you and your passengers wherever you want to go. The Prius is the most advanced hybrid on the road today. If you want to roll in style, we've got you covered in the 86 GT. Whatever your vehicle needs, Toyota has a seat for you. Come visit us today. Dear Mary Maids, just got home from a trade show and I didn't have time to pick up the house. Kids made chili. Jeff did a mud run. Oh, and Winston shredded Teddy's bed. Again, please clean it the best you can. Oh, except for the statue Max made for me. Thanks, Abby. Hi, Abby. Clean kitchen. Clean bath. Clean floor. Naughty cat. Poor Teddy. The statue is precious. You should keep it forever. See you next time, Mary Maids. We're here today with Robin Perkle. Thanks for uh, joining the show. I'm Lisa Bradshaw, and we're talking about uh, the loss of her son to suicide in 2014. He was in high school, and it came as a shock. There weren't any signs, you said, uh, leading to it or pointing to it, mm -hmm. uh, which is often the case. Mm -hmm. uh, for, for people who experience that. And then we wanted to talk also about just what you've learned since then and what, what hopefully giving viewers a sense of community that you experienced and how important that was. You talked about people showing up and you forging these really valuable, more, even more endearing mm -hmm. friendships because mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. um, what was a standout sort of, you know, what happens when, when people aren't coming as much and you know, at some point you have to get back to regular life and you guys run a farm and mm -hmm. you can't take a break from that. So how did you kind of push forward but yet still deal with the grief as it was coming? Well, I think your head is, is definitely in a fog, but you do have to go on with life. And, and for me personally, my job was a place where I could go and focus and not think about that other life, the, the, the issue that I'd had with my son or the death of my son. So it was almost um, therapeutic for me to work, keeping myself busy, keeping my mind occupied. So, so even though busy can be a four-letter word and keep you away from good things, it can also kind of keep you away from things that you need a distraction from. And that's what I found. So I found that uh, our entire family, my husband and other son, we went back to work and fortunately we had a great support system at work too. Um, we made a lot of mistakes because our mind really wasn't there. What's even an example like of that? Do you think? Oh gosh, well in my line um, I own a landscape nursery and I had placed a large order with a company for the spring. You place your orders in the fall. And I had doubled that order and not realized that I had done it twice. So when I got my confirmation in the spring, um, I, I had to call my rep and say, I, I messed up, I double ordered. And there's there's order cutoff dates where they don't let you. Mm -hmm. um, so it affects Cancel. your business yeah. in a big yeah but he he had mercy on me <laughs> i had to play the card and i didn't yeah. want to have to play that that's card. an interesting thing that you say because um playing the card mm -hmm. meaning you know you lost somebody and it messes your life up you and you don't want to use that uh, as yeah. an excuse but, but sometimes it it's a valid reason mm -hmm. i owned an internet company at the time and and I had an assistant and that helped a lot. And my friends used to say, how's Lisa doing? And she'd say, well, I can always tell by how much she's working. Mm -hmm. um, and I had a young you know, a son who was only five at the time when we lost his father. And, and there were times that I was like, guys, yeah, this is a real thing. It's not a card. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's my life. Mm -hmm. And y until you walk in those shoes of just a someone gone from your family that used to help do Critical these things piece. or yeah. be parts mm -hmm. of your everyday life, it is, it is really something. And I think because your head is really consumed with them, you, you think about them all the time. Mm -hmm. They're in your in your thoughts. And so you've still got to concentrate on your job, but they're over there in this corner and you're thinking about them too. So that's where I'm saying your your head is in the cloud even though you're in the game, mm -hmm. you're not 100% there. And mistakes are made and you have to also give yourself mercy for that too. One of the things uh, that I wanted <laughs> to talk about is when you're when you come through that fog, I, I feel mm -hmm. like grief is this, 
I likened it once to like an ocean. Sometimes you can wade on your back and really just ride with the waves, and you're okay. And then the storm and other times, comes. Yeah, and you're just like fighting to get to yeah. shore, using every bit of energy, you're, you're not getting anywhere, and it's yep. it's really difficult. Thrown against the rocks and everything you can imagine in that in that visual. So once you come through that fog and you're starting to see your real life, what about it? Uh, was important for you to honor your son and, and your community is honored yes, in other yes. ways. I mean you really for me I really wanted to keep his name alive so you want to create some kind of a legacy for that and, and in our case um, uh, the people that had come to our to the service had donated a lot of money we didn't request that so we continued several several scholarships in his name and we continue with that through uh, the Grant County Fair we go and we um, boost kids when they sell their animals in the Sean Perkle Memorial Fund so we keep his name alive that way mm -hmm. and it was also a passion of his so um, for h and FFA in agriculture he was also an avid baseball player and the Sean Shine tournament was born because we had coined the term Sean Shine um, for a a light, a sunbeam that was coming down on me on a hike one time, and I just called it Sean Shine. And so, uh, some very good friends of his in high school, as their senior project, wanted to do the Sean Shine tournament, and the money that they got from this softball tournament would go back to um, all kinds of athletics and community sponsored events. And so, this has been going on now four years that they've had the Sean Shine tournament. We are not involved in, in any aspect of it, just short of our support for them to do it. They completely take care of it. They've got their own, what is it? For a donations, and it's not an LLC, but a 401c or something. 501c3. 501c3. Yeah, yeah, there mm -hmm. you go. And they take care of it. They just come to us and just say, "Hey, we've been approached by this XYZ um, company, and they're asking for money. Would you be comfortable if we donated some of the Shanshine money?" So all of the Shanshine tournament money goes back to the Quincy community for scholarships to kids who are wanting to travel to FFA State or maybe new uniforms for the baseball team. So that is how we have healed as well. Makes us feel good to know that he is remembered, his name is out there, he is, his name is benefiting people and, and other organizations, and it just makes you feel really good when you're helping people and giving back. I feel like when that's really the real path to healing. Is, is extending mm -hmm. yourself mm -hmm. and and that's what you know I've always said I'm willing to tell my family's story if it helps lend you know courage to someone else to tell their own mm -hmm. and I, I go tomorrow is the anniversary of my late husband's double lung transplant and I along the tour that I'm taking that I mentioned earlier in the show I'm going back to Alabama where his transplant yes. took place and his doctor um, is head of transplant and he's on our board for the Don't Wait Project. And I just got you. Yeah, and I'm speaking at two engagements and talking about patient advocacy. And one of the things I learned um, about this and like you, you think about the lessons you learned, it was so difficult. It's so difficult to lose someone, but mm -hmm. But goodness, if you can try to help other people through that process, that is really... That is the key to healing, mm -hmm. and, and I think the only way that we can love them now is through our grief, mm -hmm. and I think that grief journey includes some of these ways of keeping their name alive and going on the Do Not Wait projects and just really moving forward and telling your story because you are helping so many people by doing that. Right, and when you think about um, how you've come through this and where you are now today, would not would you attribute just the moving forward part to to your healing, and not, not specifically what we're talking about now, but mm -hmm. looking at it right now today where you are, mm -hmm. uh, would, how, would, how else would you have gotten here? Yeah, it's really easy to have the pity party. It, 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 I think that that's the easiest. I had, I've had well, some. We have them. <laughs> I've wallowed I still in it myself them. sometimes, it's, yes. It's, it's an easy place to be, but it's not a fun place. Yeah. So I sometimes think. Sometimes it's more comfortable because you know who you are in that space, yeah. right? And you can do it alone in your own home and nobody right. has to see right. you or in your car. And that's one thing that I, um, th that I was thinking about in the last few weeks is that sometimes you stay in that hard place even though it's harder to be there because you don't really know who you are I mean I, I, I'm sure that you can relate in that who are you if you aren't Sean's, Sean's mom, mom and who's Sean gone. who's gone mm -hmm. and who was I if identity? I wasn't Wesley's mm -hmm. widow right I'm of course I'm Hunter's mother like you are your other mm -hmm. son's mother and you're somebody's wife and you're a business owner and you're a friend and you're all these things but that one identity 
it's huge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to let go of mm -hmm. sometimes. Well, and again, it's the only, the grief is the only lifeline that we have with them right now. So you don't want to let go because you feel guilty if you let go, you've forgotten about them. Well, yeah. we're never going to. Right. So we go back to that spot where we grieve and sometimes it's in the pity party. It takes a lot of work to wake up in the morning and say, today I'm going to find the joy and I'm going to get out of this pity party because it doesn't feel good right now. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate you being willing to come here and, and talk more about it. I felt like when you were here before, we got through what happened mm -hmm. the days leading up to it, and, and you can also watch that show uh, in the archives at the website. Uh, I have a live channel. It. Yeah, I don't <laughs> I watch it. It's yet. tough. But, um, and then I wanted to have you back to kind of let people know how far you've come and about Sean Shine and all those things. Thank so you. thank you for being here. Thanks for making the drive in the snow. Yes, no problem. And um, yeah, so I just have such respect for you. Well, thank you. And likewise. Thanks for watching. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm.